Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Music Theory Tuition series where I work with you step by step through the ABRSM Discovering Music Theory grades. I'll work through every single exercise and explain everything you need to know. You can access information about the books I have available to help you on my website. Go to SharonBill.com. For advert free and longer lessons, you can become a patron at patreon.com forward slash Sharon Bill. If you can give me a like, that would be super. And please do subscribe to my channel to stay updated. You can support this channel by buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com forward slash Sharon Bill. Let's press on onto grade five, page 57. So we're continuing to look at chords and inversions. So we're in the grade five Discovering Music Theory Workbook, page 57, and we move on to exercise eight. However, we're not doing anything new because in previous lessons, we've already looked at this method. Instead of always referring to manuscript paper to just write them out in list form. So we've been doing this anyway, so there's nothing new here at all. I think it's so much easier to work this way. And so we've worked this way from the very start. And so if we move on to exercise eight, this gives us the opportunity to now explain all of these chords and we can explain what number chord it is, describing which step of the scale the chord has been built upon and also what position the chord is in, describing particularly the bass note. So let's try a few of these together and then as soon as you feel able, do press pause and try on your own. It's much better to try on your own because you do work more, more actively that way and you learn it more thoroughly. It's okay to make mistakes. It's much better than learning passively just by copying. And it's okay if you do make mistakes, just erase them out and have another go. So I know that I'm repeating myself. I always say that, I know, but it really is the best way. So as soon as you feel that you can, just press pause and have a go. We'll work through these together first of all, just as a quick reminder if you need it. So we're in E flat major, we know that because of course they've told us, but also we can see we've got a key signature of B flats, E flats, A flats, no accidentals to tell us we're in a minor key. And so we can go ahead and label our chords. So we've got chords one, two, four and five that we need to choose from. So if we're in E flat, flat major, chord one is built on E flat, but I'm not gonna bother with the flats because the key signature will deal with that for as you can if you like. E, F, and then A, B, B flat of course. So building our triads, first, third, fifth, E, G, B, F, A, C, A, C, E, B, D, F. And now we're going to give some extra information. We're going to also say whether it's in root position with the first note of the triad as the bass, we say A. First inversion, we say B, because the middle note of the triad is the bass. Or second inversion, C, where the final note of the triad is the lowest note in the bass part, or the base of the chord. And so here we have the first one given to us. We're in the treble clef. We have a C, an E flat, and an A. So that gives us all the notes of chord four, so that's an A, C, E chord. And then because the C is in the bass, we can say it's a four B because the middle of the chord is the first inversion. And so now we press on and describe these. So we have a B flat, an E flat, and a G. That gives us all of the notes of chord one. So we can say it's chord one. And then because the B flat is at the bass, that's the final part of the triad. It's the second inversion, so we would say one C. Here we have an F A C, which is a chord two. And it's in root position because the F is at the bottom of the chord. So we could just leave it as two, or to be absolutely clear, we could say two A. Here we have a G, a B flat, and an E flat. So again, we have a chord one and the G is at the bottom of the chord, it's the lowest note, and so it's a 1B. We carry on in E flat major, but now we're in the bass clef, so here we have F, B flat, D, 
which is a chord five. And because the F is at the bottom of the chord, it's the second inversion, the last note of the triad, and so we'd say five C. Here we have a D, F, B flat. So again, it's a chord five, but this time, the lowest note is the D, which is the middle of the triad, it's the first inversion, and so we would say 5B. Here we have an A, A flat of course, C, F, that's an F, A, C chord, that's a chord 2. And because the A flat is the bottom part of the chord, we can see it's a first inversion, we'd say 2B. And then this final chord, we can't go down, so let's see what we've got here. This note is an A flat, and then A, G, F, that's an E flat, D, C. So we have C, E, A flat, or A, C, E, A flat, C, E flat, which is a chord four. And we can see that C is the lowest note. So the chord is built on C, and so it's a four B. So that's that question completed. Let's move on to exercise 8B. And so perhaps now you can have a go on your own. I'm hoping you've had a try of this. So let's check these through together. So we're in the key of A minor. We know that because there's no key signature, but there's a raised seventh accidental telling us that we're in the minor key. We're told so here as well, of course. We're looking for chords 1, 2, 4 and 5. So chord 1 is built on the first degree of the scale, which is A. Then it's B, Miss C, D, E. And then build our triads A, C, E, B, D, F, D, F, A, E, G, B. Now, the key signature deals with everything in a major key. However, in a minor, we've got to raise the seventh, and so that always falls in the middle of chord five, so it's G sharp. We have to make sure that we remember that. So here we, oh, and, and now, of course, we need to add the extra information. We're explaining whether it's root position, first inversion, second inversion. So here we have the notes. B. D, F, and so that's a chord two. And as the B is at the base, we're in root position, and so it's two A. Now here, the G sharp tells us straight away that we're in chord five, that's our big clue. We have a G sharp, a B, and an E, so we are indeed in chord five. And as the G sharp is at the bottom of the chord, we know it's a five B, because it's the first inversion, the middle note of the triad is our bottom note, so 5B. Now here we have a C, an E, and an A, so we have a chord 1. But because the C is the base of the chord, it's a first inversion, it's a 1B. And then here we have an F, and then we have an B. C, D, so we have a B, D, F, so that's going to be a chord two. And the F is the lowest note of the chord, and so we can see it's the second inversion, so it's a two C. And now we get the same key in the bass clef, so here we have a C, an E, and an A, so it's a chord one but because the C is the root note, it's a 1B, first inversion chord there. Now here we have an F, a B and a D, that's all the notes of chord two, and the F is the bass note, and so we can tell that it's a 2C. Again, here's our clue, we've got a chord five, there's our raised seventh, that always falls in the center of chord five, when in root position, we have a B, an E and a G sharp, so that's correct, yep, we are in chord five. And the B is the lowest note, and so because it's the final part of the triad, 
it's a 5C, it's a second inversion. Now here we've got quite a few ledger lines, so let's see what we've got. That's a middle C, then an E, C, D, E, F, G, A. So we have A, C, E, chord one, rearranged, so that the lowest note is the C, middle C is the lowest note, which tells us it's a 1B. And in these final two exercises, it's exactly the same principle, but now we're splitting the notes between four parts, split between treble and bass. So part of the triad will be duplicated, but the principle remains exactly the same. We just have to name the chord and then describe which is the lowest note in the bass. So we're in G major here. We have a key signature of F sharps. So one, two, four and five. We have G as our root, then A, then C as the fourth degree of the scale, D as the fifth. Build our triads. Your key signature will do all the work for you. And then we want to describe which is the root note, is it position A, B or C? So here we have B, D, G, D, they are all the notes of chord one. And because the B is the lowest note in the bass, it's a one B. Here we have a C, an A, E, A. So we have all the notes of chord two. And the lowest note is a C, and that tells us we're in first inversion. So it's a two B. Here we have F, A, D, D. So they are all the notes of D, F, A. Of course it's F sharp because of your key signature. And so we can see that it's a chord five. However, because the F sharp is the lowest note, it's a five B. And then here we have a C. E, G, C, so that's a chord four. And because the lowest note is a C, it's a root position chord, so we would say four A. And then finally, we move into F minor, so let's just write out our options. We've got chords one, two, four, and five. F is our first degree, then G, A, B flat of course, and C. I shan't bother with that though because the key signature will do all of that work for me. Build my triad, F, A, C, G, B, D, B, D, F, C, E, G. The only difference now is the E is going to be raised because that's the seventh degree of the scale, so that will have to be an E natural. That's the only one we need to watch out for in a minor scale, the raised seventh which falls in the middle of chord five. And then we can prepare to describe whether it's root position, first inversion, or second inversion by describing which note is in the bass. So we get a clue here, this has got to be chord five, and we have G, C, E, C. So of course that's correct, it is chord five. And because the G is the lowest note we can say it's a 5C, it's a second inversion. So here we have C, F, A, F. They are all the notes of chord one. And the lowest note is C. And so we would describe that as 1C because it's the second inversion. The final note of the triad is in the bass. Here we have B, G, D, G. Of course, it's a B flat. Your key signature will deal with all of that, which tells us we've got a chord two. And the B flat is the bass, the lowest note. And so we can say that it's a two B. And then finally, we have B, D, F, B. Of course, it's B flat. And that's chord four and B flat is the root of that chord and that's what's here and so we say for A 
just to be exact, to be sure that we've shown which inversion or root position this cord is in. And that's that exercise now finished. I hope this is helpful to your studies. Please do like and subscribe to stay updated. If you'd like to support this channel, you can buy me a coffee. And for advert free lessons, you can become a patron. Do visit my website where you'll find many resources available to help you. Visit SharonBill.com. Thanks for watching. Bye.